What do you think? Where'd you want to eat? No, hell, I don't care. Let's get some salmon patties. Well, shit. Tate Scott might run for sheriff if Orville Allen retires. Goddamn Tate Scott. Whole damn bunch of Yankees. Got nothing running through their veins but Cincinnati blood from Ohio. They're from Ohio. You ought to have to be from here to run for, for office the way I see it. Yeah. Well, they've been here some 40-odd years, well, though, I, Jim. I don't give a shit. Born and bred a Yankee. Okay. And plus, yeah, yeah. you got the grin of a queer. Jim, so there's a riot going on down the street. Police forces arrested a bunch of hippies. Your boy's the ringleader. Oh. Did you do the same thing if we were the Klan? No. You think the Klan let a bunch of dope heads like y'all in? <laughs> Seriously, that's man. Not what the fuck is going on saying. here? Come on, get up. Come on, get up. Get up here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What the hell do you think you're doing? Get up here. God damn. You're making me look bad. You un-American little son of a bitch. You're making me look bad out there on the street. That's bullshit, Daddy. No, it's not bullshit. Hey! Hey! Well, that's real brave. Hitting me when I'm handcuffed. Yeah. Well, I'll unhandcuff you, ignorant little bastard, then I'll be the living dog shit out of you. I'm tired of getting you bored out of all your monkey business. Now you go to the jailhouse, act like a human being, and apologize, and I'll come go your bail, <laughs> and I'll try to straighten it out, if that's possible. All right? You're a sad old man. Yeah, oh. I'll oh. bail myself out. All right. You go your way, and I'll go mine. Right. Then you go your way right to the jail. Take him away. Come on, Carol. Take him away. Let's Come go. Come on. Arrest his ass. Jimbo? Shit, I don't know. Where's Daddy? Shit, I don't know. Took off in his truck. Been acting weird lately, like everybody else in his fucking family.
Skip. <coughs> Salad dressing's mixed. Oh, Skip, if you're gonna be up all night, you're gonna have to cut down the radio. I've been listening to underground music. Carol got me to doing it. Yeah. It's real different kind of music. But uh program don't start till midnight, so I so I come in to be listening so late. Well, it don't sound like it's underground. It sounds like it's right in the room with me. Carol said if you listen to underground music, it'll open your mind up. That means to take LSD. Open in your mind. Goddamn Carol. So it's town needs a damn hippie peace march. Mm. Bunch of filth laying around the park and own shit. Carol says we got no business at being in Vietnam. He says it's in vain or something. That's easy for Carol to say. You ain't fighting the little bastard. Mm. Somebody's got to fight the bastard. You know, Carol actually did his fighting, Jimbo. What's that supposed to mean? Tell me, Skip. Uncle Carol says that he's fighting for freedom and peace. Shut up. In a, in a peaceful way. Shut up. You ain't want to talk. You're 50 years old, still living at home. Driving up and down the road in them sports cars like a damn teenager. You got no kind of life, no kind of job. Chasing after any old war out whore will talk to you. You're nearly 50 and you live here too, Dad. I thought I told you to shut up. Take it easy on me. At least I didn't turn out to be some freak like you and him did. You should go live with him. Polish each other's medals. Why are you protesting the damn war? They say Tate Scott might run for sure. If that damn Yankee gets in, we're all screwed. We'll be eating Cincinnati chili full of cinnamon in it. How you like that? Mr. Caldwell. Well, uh, I'm eating supper. Tell them. Yeah, call them back. It's long distance from England. From where? England. England? Hmm. Uh-huh. England. Hello. Mr. James Caldwell. Yeah, yeah, this is Jim Caldwell. This is Philip Bedford, Mr. Caldwell. Well, that's Philip Bedford, that son of a bitch's son. What the hell do you want? Mama's dead, son. Died today of cancer. Yeah. Wants to be buried here with the people so they're bringing her back. Who's bringing her back? That English bastard and his kids. Well, they can't come here. They ain't welcome. Well, I ain't happy about it neither, but we got to put up with it. She deserved to be with the people no matter what you've done to us. <laughs> so, uh, I believe uh, the funeral's on Saturday, all right? Tell your brothers and they'll call your sister.
call Miss Naomi down all the way over there in England. I only met her that one time when I was little. She was a free-spirited woman. How come her to leave Mr. Caldwell like that? I love Jim Caldwell, but he ain't the most romantic man in the world. And Miss Naomi, she wanted to travel, see new things. And he wouldn't take her. So one time, she just up and went by herself. Met that man over there. Then she'd come back over here, divorced Mr. Caldwell, went back over there and married Mr. Bedford. And Keith thought she'd come back to him one day. Not like this. <laughs> JD. JD. Mm. I, had some, I had some strawberry mescaline go missing. It, it wouldn't happen to be in your brain, now would it? Got what? to be. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Mm -hmm. Hang on. I got all that good shit traveling around my brain. Just play nice next time, partner, and, and, and ask. <laughs> what, baby? What? Look. Hey, buddy. What's going on? You okay, buddy? When did Mama visit us last time? Was it last 4th of July? No. No, it was like six, seven years ago. Aunt Mary Beth died. Remember, she brought you that hat. A Scottish hat. <laughs> Mama died, Carol. I call from England. Mama's name is going to say Bedford on her grave. Do you have any medicine, Carol? Yeah, buddy. I got some medicine. Are you all right, Father? Yes, yes, I'm all right. Please, stop asking me if I'm all right. Bloody fool! God damn it, Neil! One of these days your luck is gonna run out. Hey, girls, before my luck runs out, won't y'all hand me one of those beers back here? Here you go, Daddy. Thank you, baby. That's just what you need. Y'all got another one? Like it'll do fine. Now, everybody stay here, and I'll go and register. Hello. Ah, uh, could I help you? Yes, yes. Uh, I have a reservation. Your name's Bedford.
We've got an accident on 271, one vehicle. Uh, looks like there's one fatality according to officer. We need one more car and then what's out there, please. Let's go see that wreck before we head to the house, all right? Grandpa, I got to shit pretty bad. You can shit after a while. Well, look at here. Here's Jim Colwell. Reckon why that son of a bitch shows up at every wreck there is. Rich folks ain't never got anything to do. Yeah. Hey, Jim. Hey. Jim? Hey, Pick. What happened? Hey, Jim. Uh, I guess he just didn't make that curve. Hit that concrete mile marker, I figure. Yeah. As far as I could tell. All right. Yeah, he did all right. Nothing we can do till the corner gets here, but he's over at the steakhouse. Right, let's take a look. We're down there now trying to figure ways to prize him out. Why don't you watch your hey, step? Look right here. Yeah. If you get in there. Okay, here we go. Jim. Yeah. Let me take a look. Yes, sir. Yeah, you say you could just go to the other side and you can wedge his foot out. You a smaller man. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa. Let me in there. Oh, Lord. Uh. Yep. Broke his neck, it looks like. Probably didn't know what was going on. Dead in Woodrow Wilson. Grandpa, I gotta go. I'm serious. Well, go shit in the woods. They're all around here. All right? We're trying to figure this wreck out here. Might have been headed to get some pussy or something. Maybe looked up at the trees for just a second too long. There was a soul in this Volkswagen a little while ago thinking about something. Now, there ain't nothing more than a voice thrower dummy laying there. And I was trying to figure out <laughs> why he didn't make that turn. I want you to enroll in college next semester. I want to go to college, Dad. That's a waste of time. You got to get that student deferment, son. You're drafting guys left and right your age. Hello. Hey, Donna, what's up? What'd you get in? <sighs> no, Daddy don't want me out there. I got arrested. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll tell you about it when I... Okay. All right. Okay, yeah. All right. I'll see you later. That was your Aunt Donna. They just got in. She wants to come out to the house and eat. Do I have to go? Yeah, you do. Let's get. Hey. Hey, buddy. Hey, come on, let's get. Get up, down. Get up, buddy. Hey. Why didn't they just get all of it while they're in there? Yeah, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. How you doing, buddy? Oh, <laughs> You okay? Yeah, it looks like we're going to set another sales record this year. All right. Of course, we set sales records every year. Bye. It looked like we weren't last year, and then that fourth quarter, we just started moving Cadillacs off that lot, man. Philip Bedford you what. just called. What did he want? He just wanted to let us know they're here. They're staying at the Pines Motel. They're coming over to eat with us. I don't believe my goddamn ears. You invited them bastards over to our house? Damn, Donna, what's the matter with you? It took your mama away from you. Is this your goddamn business, Neil? What's going on? Don't invite them English people over here. Now she's gonna call them back and uninvite them. Like hell I will. This isn't just about you, Jimbo. Mama's dead. She's got another family and we gotta deal with that. The world don't revolve around you. Oh, I guess it's too busy revolving around you, ain't it, Donna? Oh, go make a doily, Vicky. We done had a shot off her mouth, but now we're stuck with it. Hard to believe I'm fixing to meet that man face to face. I'm furious with you, Philip. You put me in an impossible situation. We're actually going to go to this man's house. I'm sorry, Father. 
She took me by surprise. She was very insistent, and I thought it very rude to say no. You know how much I detest excuses. I wasn't making an excuse. What if he attacks me? Oh, please. Naomi told me some terrible stories about his mood swings, temper, violent temper. Hello. I've come to compare notes on the bug situation. I found the most enormous bug racing around the loo. You must come and see it. <laughs> We've been invited to the Coldwell Ranch, Camilla, for a cookout. I wonder if I've brought the proper clothes, or what does one wear to a cookout? <laughs> <laughs> it is so dreadfully hot. I feel as though I'm swimming in treacle. Are we just going to have to sit here all day? Yeah, can't we go swimming or something? Well, why don't y'all wait for Uncle Carol and me to get here? Uncle Carol always loves to swim with y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, baby. Hey. with the wind. Hi, everybody. Are you Philip? Yes, yes, Donna. That's right. And this is my brother Skip. God damn, he's a good looking son of a bitch. You have any trouble finding the place? Oh, no, 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 no. Your directions were impeccable. Well, y'all come on in. Meet everybody. Hey, guys. Come on. This is my brother Jim Jr. Everybody calls him Jimbo. His wife, Vicky. My husband, Neil. Our daughters, Autumn and April. And let's see, Jimbo's son, Alan, is somewhere around here. My son, too. Me and Jimbo. Yep. <laughs> Came right out of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I suppose it's my turn. Uh, my name is Philip. It's my father, Kingsley, and my sister, okay. Camilla. Where'd Daddy go? This is Daddy. Well, Jim Sr. Daddy, this is Kingsley. I mean, Mr. Bedford. <clears throat> How'd you do, Mr. Cordwell? Fine, just fine. Well, you have a lovely house. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, hi, guys. <laughs> this is my brother, Carol, and his son, Mickey. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Good picture you in the paper. Nice big picture. Front page. Hey there. Philip, isn't it? Yes, and you're Neil, Donna's husband. Neil Barron. I'm Donna's husband. She's the daughter. Jim and Miss Caldwell's daughter. Or, or Belford, I guess it is. Or was. Boy, it's a shame about her moving on. She's in a better place now. Better than England anyway, from what I know of it. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, son. But not really. God damn, it's miserable over there. I went over there once on venison. God damn, I don't see how y'all do it. You can't get so much as one good meal over there. They wouldn't know a grill if one bit them on the ass. And musty, goddamn cold, shitty, boil everything. They boil a goddamn Clark bar. Anyway, I don't mean to be running your place down. Well, that's quite all right. The, uh, the food can be a challenge. I'd rather live in West Virginia is there. Well, listen, pleasure talking to you. Uh, I'm going to grab a drink, if you excuse me. Hell yeah, let's get a cocktail. I'm in the car business. I got six lots in the greater Atlanta area, new and used. Of course, I don't know what they've told you about me. Well, nothing, actually, but um, you're doing a fine job. I'm a two-time pro bowler, defensive end. that played six seasons with the Lions. I got drafted by Baltimore, but when I got traded, I come into my own with the Lions. I had two pretty bad knee injuries. That's what did me in. I'll show you the operation scars later. They're <laughs> monster. <laughs> hey, Neil, don't you talk before Phillips ear off. Now, Donna was Miss Alabama back in her day. Boy, you ought to have seen her. She looked real good back then. You doing all right? Of course, she had the kids, and that's hard on them, the childbirth. Yeah, I robbed the cradle. I got her barefoot and pregnant right off the bat. That gave her something to do. Oh, she's lovely. 
Yeah, she's a good gal sometimes, Donna. Hey, listen, me and the girls are headed back after the funeral. Donna's gonna stick around for a couple days. But there's a big Falcons preseason game on Sunday. I know everybody in the organization being an ex-player, kind of a big deal around there. You want to go? 40-yard line. You up to? Well, I'm not really familiar with American football, but, but thank you. Oh, that's right. Y'all call kickball football over there. <laughs> well, you ought to come with me. Watch some real football where people don't wear short breeches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm told that you're quite the expert at the barbecue grill. What do you do to your hoof? My hoof? Yeah. You own that walking stick. Oh, yes, it's uh, been my constant companion since the Great War. I was wounded in France. I fixed up a lot of soldiers in France. Some of them just got a... A snort of whiskey and a prayer, though. So, I was a medic over there, served under Pershing. Yes, well, you all did. Well, yes, sir, we all did, yeah. Grandpa, can we go swimming? Do what? Can we go swimming? Just so you don't go half naked. <laughs> Doing eating corn? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm Skip, the one that met you on the porch while ago. I remember. <clears throat> Got three airplanes. <gasps> really? Yeah. Wow. Got a GTO. Corvette and a Chevelle. Got a lot of lung cancer and gallbladder trouble in England, is what I read. <laughs> God, your thoughts are so um, random. I am a thinker. Always have been. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Do you want to go see my cars? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, brother. Mm. Oh, it's lovely. Shit, somebody's in my damn shop. Mm -hmm. I hear music in there. Somebody's in the damn mm. shop. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, what y'all doing? Smoking? Smoking a little reefer? Yeah. Sorry, Uncle Skip. We'll, we'll get out of here. We ain't mess with nothing. <clears throat> Just, you know, take your time. Have fun. Just don't let Jimbo and Daddy catch you, all right? Okay? You got it. Right. Maybe Child. turn the music down or something. All right. Turn the music down. Oh, man. Grandpa would kill us if he caught us. <laughs> I mean, really kill us, probably. Just... Yeah. 
Your old man and grandpa both real uptight. Only time grandpa seems to lighten up is when he's dragging my ass off to a car wreck or drowning. That's some weird shit, man. He brought me out to see when uh, when Floyd Carver shot that guy from the employment office in the belly. <coughs> oh, yeah. He died? Can't remember. Dude, he killed the shit out of him. I saw his guts and everything. Daddy says grandpa needs a trip. He says it might loosen him up some. He don't even know what ass it is, probably. Imagine that, Grandpa tripping. <coughs> That's some funny <laughs> shit right there. You know, I got some acid, you know. If you want some, if you want to try it. OK. Yeah. Here we are. As if I went an auto reading for automobile lovers. <laughs> oh. Automobile lovers, I like the way that sounds. In fact of business, I like the way everything you say sounds. <laughs> Wish I could speak English. Anyhow, this here's the Wildcat, United States Navy. That's what I flew in the war. Car name's a GTO, nickname Goat. Uh, why do you compare your cars to aeroplanes? Oh, I cook up missions all over the county. Keeps my head in the clouds. <laughs> Anyhow, the Wildcat thing about this plane was it was the very first American fighter in the Pacific, which is where I fought in the war. Oh. Anyhow, right here, step on over here. Oh, look at this one. Oh, yeah. <gasps> That's your Hellcat. Car named Chevelle, you see it right there. Chevelle's a little quicker than a GTO. Handles better, too. And the grand finale over here. Oh, I love this one. Oh. That's something. Does it go fast? Yeah, it does. <gasps> Bet it does. I'll do, shouldn't I? <gasps> now, the course there had 11 to 1 kill ratio. This, uh, don't sit on it. Oh, don't sit on it. Terribly sorry. It's OK. <laughs> Anyhow, the course there had an 11 to 1 kill ratio in the Corvette, 11 to 1 compression ratio. Isn't that something else? <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful machine. Mm. I tell you what, I love this thing. Now, see, notice how the hood's so long, that pretty hood, and longer than the ass end so much. Eh? Well, in a Corsair, from the cockpit to the propeller, 14 feet. See there? I do. Yeah. Do you know, you're like a little child when you talk about them. What do you mean? A kid can't fly these things. <laughs> Well, it's just not any son of a bitch that can handle them. I mean, you can make a mistake pretty easy, believe me. Well, I accept you. They're beautiful. Yes, they are. I feel real strange about Mama. Dear Naomi, what an eccentric creature she was. I wonder why she didn't tell us she was sick. She just didn't want you to worry. There was nothing you could do. Hmm? Your accent sure is pretty. I could listen to you talk all day long. I need to smoke a reefer with my nephews. You want to go with me? Yes, I do. Thank you. I know she didn't eat much. She don't like Daddy's cooking. Oh, no, no, no. It's, uh, it's, it's not that. Um, I'm sure it's wonderful, but I, I, I can only eat a very bland diet. How come? I was a prisoner during the war of the Japanese. Uh, the culinary skills of the Jap cooks left a lot to be desired. My insides were left a bit of a wreck. Sorry, I didn't mean to be nosy. Oh, that's quite all right. All three of my brothers were in the war. Carol was in the Marines. He was a medic. Skip was a pilot in the Navy. They both got decorated. Jimbo was in the Army, but he don't talk about it much. He ran the laundry at Fort Polk. He's so damn jealous of other boys' medals, you'd think he was in high school. Oh, he shouldn't feel that way. He did his bit. Yeah. Try telling Jimbo that. Try telling Jimbo anything. He's daddy's boy, all right. Families can be difficult. 
<laughs> they sure can. So are you married? Divorced. Oh. You got any kids? She pestering the shit out of you, Phil? No, no, no. Not at all. Neil. Get me a beer. Oh shit, you got legged. <sighs> well, may I thank you for your hospitality, Mr. Caldwell? The barbecue is superb. You will. See you tomorrow. Hey, sweet ass. Well, that's a real offer. Hey, thank you. I'm telling you, we can have a damn kind of. Yeah. Donna's staying here for a couple days. We go down and have a few hours. Hey, you're blotter. Hey, listen, there's something I was thinking about. I just want to ask you. Yeah. This English accent of yours, there's something about it. There's just something about it. Now, uh, I know we don't know each other that good yet, and I'm sure that you're not going to just actually do it with me yet, but but, uh, <laughs> but I was wondering, sometime can we just slip off and you uh, get naked and talk English and recite something, I don't know, and just let me beat off to you? Beat off. Um... What, her wank? See, that's what I'm talking about. That damn English. <laughs> Makes me hornier than Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Have a wank. You're mad so much. I ain't mad. I just get real focused on things. <sighs> Think about it. Okay. I think about it. So far? Yeah. Yeah. Come back to It's all kind of hard to think about, huh? What? You gonna be okay tomorrow, you think? Tomorrow? Well. What about it? The funeral. All units, we have a three car accident up on Blanton Highway and Sarah yeah. Road. Four fatalities yeah. confirmed, several injuries. Not real sure how many. It's a shame about old Naomi, you know. It, it really is. Yeah. You ain't fooling me. Yeah. Better go. There's <laughs> a big wreck <sighs> right down the road. See you later. Okay, Daddy.
How you doing, Pops? Good. Hey, homie. I forgive you this time. Mama? D Daddy? Hey, buddy, hey. Daddy? some water. There you go. Well, somebody ought to go with them. They're in a strange town. They don't know anybody. Donna, we're all headed over to church now for your mama's funeral. Right. She's right, Daddy. Somebody ought to go with her. God, I hope he's all right. What if he's dead? Thank you. 
You want to sit by the window? You want me to rubber track you? They're drawing teeth and bones and hair and shit. I mean, it's the hardest fought game, and I've been in this place. He's gonna all day long. pinch my last nerve. We got one point with one second to go, and you know what happened? I, I, I don't know. They missed a the dang extra point. Why, right? right. <laughs> oh, hey, right, babe, they get your mama buried all right? Yeah. Hey, listen, I gotta get something else to eat. This ain't taste like shit. How's your daddy doing? He's doing well. Thank you. He had a heart attack about three years ago, so of course we're worried about that. But the doctor said he just fainted because of the stress and exhaustion. He's resting now, and Camilla's with him. Oh, thank God. How long are they going to keep him? They said they'd release him in, in, in a bit. <clears throat> but they don't want him to travel uh, for a day or two, which means we, we won't be leaving tomorrow. Well, he can't stay at the Pines Motel. I mean, none of y'all should be there in the first place. That ain't nothing but an after-prom fuck joint. No telling <laughs> whose jizz y'all are sleeping on. Y'all are staying at Daddy's. That's very kind, but... We couldn't possibly. Oh, yes, you could possibly. I think it's a great idea. Daddy would insist. All right, girls, let's go. We got shit to do. Neil, thank you so much for your help in the hospital. Hey, no sweat, Slick. All Take right, y'all drive yourself, safe. All right? Call me when you get there. Hey, Neil, keep it on the road. Bye, babies. Bring me one of those beers back here. And Donna. Yeah. Uh, Connell's band's playing tonight. Really? Uh, yeah, at the Main Dollar Store parking lot. And uh, I'm doing the sound and lights. Uh, you ought to come. All right. Okay. I'll see you later then. See you there. Okay. I feel like dancing anyway. Let's go dance. I should stay here with my father. You need to relax. There's a whole house full of people to take care of your daddy. <laughs> I'm not really a dancer. Well, you will be when I get through with you. Hey, what's going on? Any gruesome car crashes, any homicide? No, doesn't appear to be, no. Too bad. Hey, let me ask you a question. How cold can it be in there? It's really that dark and cold inside you that you can't even hug your own son on the day of his mama's funeral. You're drunk, go home. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you another question. You remember when I was wounded on Saipan? I was in the hospital for three months. Of course I do. Yeah, yeah. I wrote you a letter from that hospital. I spilled my guts out to you. I told you everything you ever meant to me about how when I signed up, I became a medic because you were a medic in World War One, and and uh, and and how I didn't even mind getting shot because because I figured that you was finally you know proud of me and and how I admired you more than anybody else in the world, even President Roosevelt. And you never wrote me back. I mean, you never said one word about that letter, not to this day. I never got a letter like that. You're lying, Pops. Donna told me she saw you reading that letter. Your sister must be mixed up with something. Your letter must have got lost, lost in the mail. You know, I used to think that you were seven feet tall. I spent my whole childhood just trying to be just just like you. God damn, I'm glad I didn't succeed. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you turned out real good. Charge for the guns, he said, into the valley of death. 
rode the 600. I actually had fun. Cossack and Russian reeled from the saber stroke, shattered and thundered. Oh. 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 Then they rode back, but not the 600. Tell you something. She can't tell a soul, especially my grandmother. Well, all right, man. I got a problem, man. What is it? I mean, I really got a problem right now. All right. I got this in the mail today. Thought you should check it out. Shit, man. What are we gonna do? What do you think I'm gonna do? So, I want to see how you were feeling. A great deal better, thank you. Well, that's, that's good. Good to hear. Yeah. Good night. Good night, Mr. Carter. Oh. Uh, no, I got a question for you. How do y'all meet, you and Naomi? Well, uh, I was taking my dog, Molly, for a walk in Hyde Park one morning. Uh, Border Terrier, wonderful dog. And my wife had died a year previously. Molly had become my Constant companion, always trying to lift my spirits. I noticed a very attractive woman standing by the bronze statue of St. George slaying the dragon. And uh, she had a camera, obviously a tourist. And uh, she spotted me and she asked me in a very attractive Southern American accent if I'd care to take her picture. Of course, I said I'd be delighted. So she gave me the camera, and I was expecting her to stand in front of the statue and smile, and I'd take a snapshot of her, I'd give her the camera back, and we'd go our separate ways, but not a bit of it. <laughs> not a bit of it. No, instead, she absolutely astonished me by climbing on the back of the horse, sitting astride it behind St. George, as quickly yeah. 
and as nimbly as a monkey. Sounds like a year. Oh. I was laughing so much, I had difficulty in taking the picture properly. <laughs> anyway. That's how I met Naomi. We just always wondered about it. Always wondered. Yeah. Hey, kid. What's up? Just going outside for a smoke. You? Just having my cereal. You're up early. Not really. I ain't been to bed yet. How come? Connell and me. We were up all night talking. Connell got drafted. Shit. Star they know yet? Nah, he ain't told her yet. Man, poor thing. She loves that kid to death. It's weird, Daddy. How can government just come and tell you what to do like that? Right, he was gonna go to California get in a music scene. It's fucked up. Nah, I know it ain't right. I mean, that's what I'm telling you. You gotta get in college. That's why I'm against it, you know? So a kid like Connell has, has a dream, gets a, gets a chance to live it. Well, you know, there is something cool about it, though. Connell being a soldier. No, it's not. There's nothing cool about it. Well, looky there. Here we go. Nobody else is going to church. Why do we have to? Because we always go to church. Because we love the Lord. We went to church yesterday. No, we didn't, God damn it. Went to a funeral. It's different. I'm <laughs> just fiddling around in there. What are you doing? Uh, it's hot. Yeah? Very hot. So when are you going to get naked and recite something to me in your accent? Hmm? Come on, tit for tat. No is not an acceptable response. Listen, um... Hmm? Yes? Pop in. Okay. Kingsley. You heard of Jane Mansfield? Jane Mansfield. Yeah, uh, film star. Um, blonde with um, no, it's... titties. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, she was killed uh, a couple of years back in a car wreck in Louisiana, and a friend of mine just called from town. They had the very car she was killed in out of the discount store, and they're selling tickets, and it, it's a big deal. And I, I darn near forgot it was today. Would you like to come with me? Come on. All right? Oh. Let's go. All right.
It's a good spot. I come out here to do my thinking. I used to bring Patty over tonight here and just wear her ass out. That was before the war. She married a primitive Baptist preacher. She was hair-lipped. And you needed Grandpa's bifocals to see her titties, but you know, she had a $900 ass, and God damn, she could take it right up to the gills without so much as a hiccup. Oh, I think she sounds like a lovely girl. <laughs> yeah. Right, enough beating about the bush. Let's get on with that fly boy. I think a uh, little Tennessee Williams would be appropriate. Do you know a streetcar named Desire? You hear that? No, uh, I don't. But? Silence. That's what was hard to get used to. It still is sometimes. It's kind of like floating on a peaceful lake with a tornado in your head or something. I never did want to see Rex. I didn't want to know what somebody's last thought was before they died. I never wanted to see dead faces looking at nothing. I just wanted to fly. When I was a kid, I read books on it. And once in a blue moon, one would fly over and I'd watch it till it disappeared. So that's how come I joined in 1940. We won him in a war at that point. I just wanted to fly up there in the quiet and the still. I was a Navy pilot. How about that? It wasn't quiet and still, though. It was loud and crazy and scary. But you went up every time you're supposed to. You did what you're supposed to do. And I went up with three minds. One mind was always thinking, one way or the other, I'm gonna get back. I'm gonna make it back. And then another mind was always thinking, this is probably gonna be the last day of my life. And then your third mind was right down the middle and didn't think about anything. I wouldn't let the other two in. You know, people say they don't like to talk about war because it brings up the bad memories and the nightmares and everything. I don't believe that. I believe they don't talk about it because nobody wants to hear it. See, in the early part of the war, the Japanese were good pilots. Better than we were, really. Later on, we got better, but... I made a mistake that day. It was a clear blue day and he got in behind me and uh, I got hit right here and back up there, back. And I couldn't believe I'd been shot. And at the same time, I'd been expecting it all the time, you know, I, one way or the other. <clears throat> I bailed out. I didn't want to, I was scared to, but I didn't want to burn to death. That's what we were mostly worried about up there. Yeah.
You know how lucky I am? No. I landed right in the middle of the goddamn U.S. Marines. <laughs> Knocked me out. I broke my right leg, collarbone, a few ribs, pelvis, both hands. I don't remember a lot about it, to tell you the truth. November the 12th, 1942, Guadalcanal. I woke up in a hospital. I had both my hands in cast and my right leg just tore to pieces. And the uh, hospital got hit. And I nearly burned to death. I saw a guy coming at me with a big old wet blanket or something. But he threw it over my head. I thought he was trying to kill me. But uh, he saved my face, as Jimbo says, for what that's worth, and got me out of there. Carol got to come visit me a couple of times. That's real special. And that was the end of the war for me. I mean, goddamn, honey, you can't get out of your own skin no matter what it is. Anyhow, it takes five kills to become an ace. And I got six. I'm an ace. Skip. Um, I didn't uh, beat off. Come on, I know a place. Her, with a boyfriend, and a chauffeur. They all got killed, Louisiana, middle of the night. The kids was in the back seat, didn't hardly even get hurt. The little old dog of hers, uh, dead in Ren 1010. Yes, I can remember when it happened. It's always shocking when the rich and famous die. No reason for us to believe that they should have immunity, but we seem to. You reckon how many people lived to a ripe old age if we didn't go anywhere? Because transportation kills a lot of people. Yeah. What if the last thought in the world was, God damn it, here comes a car across the center line about to kill me because I had to get out at 10 o'clock at night for a roll of toilet paper? <laughs> we should have just wiped my ass with a sweet gum leaf. <laughs> yes, I've been thinking a lot about last thoughts recently. I... Uh... I hope I don't have one. Yeah. I'd rather go in my sleep, so there wouldn't be any conscious thoughts. Oh. Just get... dream instead. Yeah. Hopefully a good one. Yeah. yeah. Three, please. <sighs> yeah. 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 Oh, son. I was getting better luck. Mm. There it is. Mm. Yeah. 
What they said was there was a car was headed through a road in the swamps. And there was a mosquito truck on the road spraying pesticide. And it comes drifting across the road like a cloud, just this fog of poison. And this tractor trailer rig slowed down when it hit the fog. And Jane Mansfield's car slid right under it. That was it. That was all she wrote. Yeah. Mm. She was decapitated, wasn't she? A lot of people think that, but it wasn't a whole head, no. It was just the top of it. Yeah. Mm. Kingsley, you spent a lot of your time figuring things out. <laughs> you know, Jim, these days I think I spend more time accepting things. Not me. <laughs> I spend all of my time figuring things out. Yeah. That ain't her real head. Shit, don't you think I know that? My daddy says it's probably not even really her car. Ain't you got anything better to do than to pester me? Huh? Huh? <laughs> That's right. Uh, I'll be in the truck. Yeah. Well. Hmm. Seen enough. Just about. Just about. Dead man's stare ain't any different than that plastic head stare. Ain't nothing to either one of them. I saw it on the battlefield many times. Sure you did too. Yeah, I'm afraid I did. But the fact is, we all have a crash of some sort awaiting us. Yeah, that's right. You hear that? Yeah. <laughs> I put pieces together all the time, but they all fall apart. Before I can ever get it all put together, they all fall apart. <laughs> That's it exactly. Everything's been turned upside down. Yeah. Listen. And then I went on to be Miss America, but I love my boys, but for the life of me, I can't figure them out. Jimbo's a good hand around here. Turned out normal. Did him see combat. The other two, without and out heroes, turned out to be hardly a notch over hobos. No, you <laughs> you think it'd be the other way around. No, yeah. I mean, yeah, if I have to say that yes. Philip has been a bit of a disappointment to mm -hmm. me. Too. Nope. Yeah. Well, times are changing. <laughs> Good life's disappearing. <laughs> Sometimes I pray <laughs> I'm not here to see it go. Oh my God, do you believe them? They're acting like long lost buddies. I know. I'm amazed. Let's go sit down a bit. It's right? really quite a storm, isn't it? Rest your bones. Look at them. I'm telling what they was up to while we was at church. Yeah. I'm gonna go freshen up. Well, hey, Sister Vicky. Let's take a walk. We had fun, right? It's about my sister. We had fun, right? You need to leave her the fuck alone. Oh, no, see here. I don't oh, know what no, you're no, getting no, at. No, 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 no. I'm not pissed off at you. I don't even like you. I only get pissed off at people I like. There's nothing in this for me. This is for your own damn good. Don't get mixed up with her. Marzell! She would have got to put up with. Like I was fixing to tell you, she ain't a bad gal sometimes. But she can suck you down in the hole you'll never be able to crawl out of. Neil used to be a slim, muscular, good-looking, humble guy. Now he runs his mouth off like a thrashing machine just so he doesn't have to hear himself think. And if you look at him, he can't even hardly squeeze into a damn leisure suit. Eats whatever you put in front of him, drinks two cases of beer a day. Like all the shit you don't. You want to have some spending money in your pocket. Careful, careful. Not have to work like a slave. Keep your sanity. Let her be. She's tricky. 
She's as whiny as a two-week-old cat. <laughs> I ain't even sure them's his daughters. Get me? Hippies, dope, laziness. They call it free love. It's a free ride or what it is. What astounds me is the lack of respect. You know, the people that we fought and uh, died next to us, if they were to see what was going on today, they would literally spit in their graves. It's just a cry and shame. While well, our boys are fighting in the jungle, the hippies are they're singing songs and pissing on our flag. Well, don't they realize that there is a rising tide of communism that is going to sweep up onto our shores and overwhelm us as it's not stopped in places like Southeast Asia. Exactly what I've been telling Carol word for word. This war's not about communism. It's about nationalism. The Vietnamese people just want to be free of foreign domination. First the French, hey, and now the Americans. Hey, we ain't trying to dominate anybody. We're just trying to bring freedom. At the point of a gun. Yeah, so sometimes violence is a necessary evil. That's right. That's right. It was my turn in 17. And then Carol and Skip had to go off after Pearl Harbor. And pretty soon, well, it's going to be uh, Alan's turn. We need to keep Alan around here. He's got a groom to take over one of these days. Well, now there's plenty of time for that. Well, what, you want him to come home with a chest full of medals, too? Or get killed? Uh, or both, hey. <laughs> I'm just glad I got girls and not boys. <laughs> Don't you think you've had enough, Father? I mean, you're just a day out of hospital. I've had quite enough of you hectoring me about my drinking. It's one of the few pleasures that I have left. <laughs> and also, I've had quite enough of you posing as some sort of military expert. Oh, I'm no expert, but... I do know something about war. I was a soldier, too. Oh, yes. I had forgot. Yes, you fought at the glorious Battle of Singapore. The nip surprised us. Yeah. Our heavy artillery was pointed seaward, and they came up behind us through the jungle, and we surrendered to a force a third the size of ours. It was the most disgraceful defeat in British history. And Philip was a part of it. It was a botched business, I admit. <laughs> yes, well, coward Percival should have been court-martialed, shot. General Percival was a brave and honorable man. The situation was hopeless. The fact is, Philip, you spent the war as a prisoner, as a mere slave of the Japs, not as a soldier. But I survived. A great many of us didn't. I think I should receive some credit for that. Well, the will to live is very powerful, even among the lower animals. Insects. Mere instinct. I surrendered because I was ordered to surrender. You didn't have to surrender! You could have gone off into the jungle and fought as a gorilla! You haven't the faintest bloody idea what you're talking about! Yeah. I am astonished. <laughs> what makes you think that you can speak to me in this fashion? What makes you think you can sit there and spout drunken nonsense and not be called upon it? Oh, face the truth, Philip. You're lazy and you drift through life and then you blame everything on the war. You're insane. I've never blamed a war for anything. You really do live in a fantasy land. Fantasy? You are a pompous old dinosaur that's outlived his time. I think those Japanese guards kicked you <laughs> too many times in the head. I really must apologize. I behaved very poorly. Don't worry about it. I busted a few glasses in my day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever happened to stiff up her lip? <laughs>
What are you doing, Skip? I came to see you. You should go put a shirt on, get you some ice cream or something. We'll go to bed. Do you remember me being a kid? Well, hell yeah, she was a kid one time, so I remember it, yeah. You remember when I was a little bit of kid? I just said, yes, I do. Now, you're my damn kid. God damn it, I'm looking through some business paper. Just get you an ice cream now. Go to bed. You remember any stories about me when I was little? You remember anything like one time when you and me had a conversation sometime, something like that? Anything, I mean, just some story about me when I was a little kid, you know? Cause you know, uh, mama told me one or two the last time I saw her. What'd she tell you? Well, she told me one about a cousin of hers that was so wild they used to tie him to a tree while they fed the chickens and put the wash up. Mm -hmm. I called him precious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, power's back up. Put your shirt on. Go find something to do. Yeah. All right. Donna. Put a shirt on, Daddy. Boy, you sure did, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Well, I must have been something else when I was a kid. There's no way it wasn't going to happen. Don't it feel good to live? Yes. 
yes, it feels good to live. We don't seem too happy about it. Don't get all English on me again. I mean, you can't tell me that one good. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I can't tell you that. Quit being so weird. You are thinking something bad, aren't you? It's not fair to be acting so weird and not tell me what it is. Talk to me. I'm just tired. Just very tired. Don't make excuses. Tell me. Okay. Those things my father was saying about me, about the war. I, I was a prisoner, a slave, but I was still a soldier. God. <laughs> That's what you were thinking about? Not about me or about just now. You know, about us. You wanted to know? Well, the war's over. And daddies are daddies. They're always yelling and saying shit. I don't want you to think about anything else tonight but me. I'm sorry, but you insisted. No way you can really understand anyway. There's really no. Hey! Don't treat me like that. I'm not some idiot. Did you really spend the whole war as a prisoner? You didn't ever fight? It depends what you mean by fighting. Fighting the enemy, shooting, jumping from foxhole to foxhole, not too much. Fighting to survive every crawling, filthy, miserable, horror-filled minute. Yes, as I fought. I never do. Probably way off in the next county by now. My father's a monster. Yeah, daddy's a monster too. You watch much TV? <laughs> no. Hey, daddy. <coughs> hey. I heard you and Kingsley are going hunting. Yeah. We're going out, out around Ten Mile Creek. But it ain't hunting season. My places. It's always on the season. I'm proud of you. How come? <laughs> because of how nice you've been to Kingsley. Yeah, well. I hated that man for 20 years. Blamed me for ruining my life. Yeah. What changed? Well. I started at the funeral home when it rolled him out to the ambulance. I looked at him on that stretcher. Strange town, long way from home. Just, his wife just died. He's thinking maybe he's fixing to die too. And I just thought, well, <laughs> a poor devil. And it was like, I wasn't mad no more. <laughs> What is that? I 
iced tea, huh? <laughs> I made some for your grandpa. He and Sir Kingsley going, huh? <laughs> made some hot tea for Sir Kingsley. Want a sip of tea? Huh? Not yet, not yet. It was a Civil War battle far, not far from here, called the Battle of Ten Mile Creek. Really? Yeah. See, the Yankees come swooping down off the high ground, killed just about all our boy. Uh, you haven't brought your dogs with you? No. We don't need any dogs. Daddy! What, Mickey? I'm trying to meditate. That was Alan. He's been tripping since last night. This morning, put some of Grandpa's iced tea. Why would he do that? I told him he said it'd be a good idea. Oh, actually, I've got a very funny hunting story about Philip when he was a small. Hold boy. on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, take it back. Hold on. What's happening? What's happening? Good. How do you how, how do you mean? Good. Uh, oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Everything feels funny. Yeah. Looks a little wiggly. Do you feel a little wiggly? Jim, are you all right? Everything's changing. The ground, and the tree, and the sky. Got lines in it. And leaves look like waves. And uh, I don't have any balance. I don't have any balance. Oh, please tell me that you see that parade of trees on that wave of leaves up yonder, see? Cause I don't know what I don't know what's going on where I'm at. Look, <coughs> we've got to get you back home. Yeah. No, 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 don't. We've got to get you home. Let me help you out. Oh no. You can kiss my ass. Huh? You have to kill me first. Yeah? How'd you get behind behind our lines? Got a whole company of men right behind that curtain over there, you sorry sack of hun shit. Drop that weapon! Have, have, have you gone completely mad? Yeah. I, I'm not a German, Jim. It's Kingsley. German Jim Kingsley. Good alias. Is that how you got back here, Mr. Alias? Let me see your orders now. Your orders. Who won the 1916 World Series? And the faintest idea. The Boston Red Sox in six. Lass sie sich mal fallen und Hand über den Kopf. Ja, ja, Hand über den Kopf! All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Jim, calm down. Yeah. Calm down. Well, you think you're used fool when you carry it here? <laughs> Open your mouth. I'm, I'm English. We fought on the same side. But it's not the Great Wall now. It's 1969, so please, please, please put the gun down. Oh, oh my God! Shoot him! Shoot Jim! Where's Daddy? Is he back yet? He's not with old man Bedford. What's going on? Alan put LSD in Daddy's iced tea. You fucking what? Where did Alan get LSD? Did you say where he was going? Yeah, they're out along Ten Mile Creek. Okay, come on, come on, let's go. Let's go. Get your truck. Lord have mercy. Jim! Jim!
right, Carol, you go this way. You go that way. Hey! Donna, you get your ass over here. Beautiful! Jim! I never knew it was so beautiful! God, we really God, have so to beautiful. return to the truck. <laughs> Philip! <laughs> I found them! Come on, Kingman, get your skinny little ass in here. God, are you all right? Yes, yes, I'm all right. <laughs> Poor German's completely uh -oh. lost his mind. Here comes the police. What are y'all looking at? What did it happen? Oh. I've been worried for Jim for the last hour and a half. Come on in. <laughs> I love it. I love it. How is he? About the same. According to Carol, it could take say? quite a long time for the drug to wear off. You don't, you don't ever care about nobody but what you want. Son, I'm gonna tell you right now. I would never I'm glad you're do that safe, to though, father. father. I would never do that to my father. I was worried How about the hell you. could you do that? Nothing to worry about her being in tight as You disrespected me right now. <laughs> you don't be grabbing for Philip. you understand? You can't grab me. Sure Last night, I, I, I think I said some things that I didn't really mean. You know? I didn't either, Father. You're too big to spike, you understand me? I'm going to wait here. Just put it behind us, Ian. Go on. You get your ass up to that room. Get your ass up to that room. Tell me what to do. I'm sure as shit can. As long as you're in this house, you're mine. Well, I hate this house, and I fucking hate you. Come out till I tell you to come out. My billfold got wet in the creek. Take all the stuff out, spread it all out dry. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Where is it? Get away there. Yeah. 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 Spread it, dry everything. And my license and whatnot. That damn letter of yours. Understand. Oh, all these years you've been carrying this around. Why not say it meant something to you? It's not gonna kill you to talk to your kids, Pops. You might be surprised what happens. What's the matter with your head? Huh? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hey, Skip. 
Yeah, all right. I know that was a, was a time when everybody I looked at looked like pigs with hollowed out eyes. Everything was kind of yellow. Is that one years in the war? No, about 10 minutes ago. Maybe it was yesterday. I'll be down. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. You see down there where, the, where that fence rolls along where the driveway looks like a big rubber band? No? Huh? No, sir. I can't hardly see anything out there. I tell you the truth. I... Well, I was putting Bob wire up along there. You must have been about seven or eight, and I had you helping me. And I got it all tangled up. I ended up falling, getting I got it all rolled up in it. And uh, it all stuck in my hair, even, and my shirt, my pants. <laughs> and, I, and, and I asked you to help me get out of it, and then you started bawling and run off. I said, "Why, well, you little shit. <laughs> 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 And a minute or two, you come back just hauling ass, still crying with a pair of wire cutters. I said, God damn, Skip, I done got wire cutters right here. I just need you to help me get out of this. <laughs> you always, uh, you always panic when somebody got hurt. You don't ever see anything that hurt. You never did. <laughs> Sounds about seven or eight. Yeah. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Oh, I'm just kind of putting my arm around you a little. Yeah. Huh. Feel strange. Yeah. All right. Huh. Mm -hmm. Are you wet? Wet? Yeah. No, sir. You feel wet. <laughs> we old West Outlaws, I was thinking about this the other day. I'd be Jesse James. Carol would be Pat Garrett. Skip, you be Billy the Kid. Pat Garrett wasn't an outlaw. Yeah, he was. Then he changed his mind, he switched over. How come I'd have to be Billy the Kid? Cuz. Cuz he was just a dumbass who got lucky and killed a few. There's this one picture of him. I saw it. He's lopsided. Looks like he's licking the snot off his nose. What if I throw a low, hard one down there and bounce it up into your nuts? How'd you like that? I don't think I like that too much. I'm just kidding. I'm just fucking with you. Hey, can we take a break? Because I'm tired of just standing here. <laughs> I don't know about you. Hey. <laughs> what? Hey. Oh. One of the dogs have been shitting on the porch. I think it's this damn Penelope. Where'd everybody go? Well, Jimbo's out back someplace there. Uh, no, I mean, uh, where's the Bedfords? Well, they left already about an hour ago. They left? Yeah. Well, why didn't anybody wake me up? I reckon nobody thought about it. Good girl. Well, what they say? They just said bye. We had a good time, you know, stuff like that. You know, Dorothy gave him some chicken and biscuits to eat on the road. Good girl. Did, did anybody say tell Donna goodbye or? Not that something? I remember. No. No. Well, you're a good girl most of the time. Don't shit over there now. Uh, better see what Jimbo's up to. Okay. Yeah. 
be good to get home. Hmm? Yes, Father. Well, Skip, you finally got some decent pussy, didn't you? Maybe I'm in love with her. What do you think of that? <laughs> what? I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. That's just funny for some reason. Hey. Oh, shit, man. Daddy did ass yeah. him. He said he figured out everything he ever wondered about. I think he said when he puked, he forgot all of it. <laughs> hey, Jimbo. What did, what did you put in Mama's casket? I saw you put something in there. There's just something between me and her. Come on, man. What was it? There's a letter I wrote her I never sent her. What? You don't think I never smoked dope before? <laughs> what do you think I am, a caveman? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I just don't like it. It ain't good for me. I start thinking the FBI is chasing after me. My heart starts racing so fast, I'm worried it's not gonna stop until I'm dead. Hey, Jimbo, me and Carol, we don't care that you never did see combat, just so you know. We really don't. I mean, you're our brother, and we love you to death, and uh, you're our flesh and blood, you know? We're glad you didn't. There ain't no reason to be jealous about it. You don't have any idea. So, um... You ought to be happy about it. I mean, me and Carol's proud of what we did and everything, but uh, it's a goddamn nightmare, Jimbo. So you ought to just let it go. See, you can work and sleep and be thought of as normal. Me and him can't, you know. I mean, you see how daddy treats us. What little sleep I get, I wake up thinking I'm on fire. Now, how'd you like that? Sometimes, man, you can really fuck up a free meal. I want you to have to say that for me. He was actually smoking with us and talking to us. I don't want you to have to say that, man. It just felt right. Here. Put this on your face. That's why you'd be Billy the Kid. He got shot when he was 21 for being too big for his britches and not thinking. You just need to think sometimes before you open your mouth. I do think, Jimbo. No, you don't. <laughs> I try not to. <laughs> hey, hey. Let's go get some cheeseburgers. 
Hey, go hang out at my place. Let's go. All right. Let's go. You drive. You shitting me? Tell Go ahead. Are you sure, buddy? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Stop, stop the car, stop the car. God damn it. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jimbo. I just don't feel right. Well, God damn it, Skip. Daddy? Hey. What's up? I went to the recruiting office yesterday. You were over at Grandpa's and I joined the army. The sergeant said they keep me and Connell together. Everybody in the family did it, Daddy. I saw this picture of some guys in Nam hanging out with some palm trees with their shirts off, and guns slung over their shoulders. Looks so fucking rock and roll. I want to do something cool, Daddy. I, I don't want to ride here. I'm 18. I don't need your permission.
Yeah, 